Hey everybody, this is Glenn Tate. I miss America. Welcome to the Haas USMC channel. Hey guys, Haas USMC here, and I wanted to make a video today about the events that are going on in Eastern Oregon, in Burns, uh, that relate to the Hammond family and the, the folks that are out there at the uh, Wildlife Refugee. Now I've spoken directly with the leaders of the Central Oregon uh, militia groups, or the groups of people that are, um, you know, they would maybe not describe themselves as militias, but they are community defense groups in Central Oregon. I've spoken to the leaders, I'm friends with them, and they're the ones that organized the protest, the peaceful protest that was to occur in Burns, which was a peaceful march through the town. Uh, they requested that people didn't open carry. It was meant to be a show of support and a way to, for the Hammonds, and a way to bring awareness uh, to the situation without uh, doing something that was going to make the situation worse. Directly after this uh, event, Ammon Bundy, along with a man named Blaine Cooper, who I met at the Bundy Ranch, uh, took several people, I don't know how many, maybe dozens, out to a wildlife refugee that he claims was formerly ranches, uh, private ranches. Uh, this may or may not be true. I don't know that fact because I haven't looked into it. Um, and they took over a building that was abandoned there. I'm not sure the size of the building or what it is, but I would assume that it's a relatively small building. Uh, being in the middle of a wildlife refuge. I don't support this move and I really want to tell you why uh, because a lot of people are confused as to why I would support the Bundys before and I would support things like this before but not now and unfortunately I have to explain this but I will. When I was invited to the Bundy Ranch uh, I was invited first of all and secondly uh, once I, I arrived I did what was asked of me uh, within my what I determined to be what was morally correct for me and I, as far as I know I didn't break any federal laws and I didn't break any state laws I, I didn't break any laws when I was there uh, I did I was invited into the Bundy's home and had dinner with them and I slept on their front porch so uh, these are people that I've spent time with before and they were very kind and generous to us while we were there and I supported what they were doing there because it was an active, um, they were actively uh, confiscating the property of the Bundys, the, the BLM were, were, and threatening the lives of, of, un, of people that were not affiliated necessarily with the Bundys. They were literally threatening their lives with firearms. And I determined that that was my line and I was going to go there and I was going to support this group. Uh, in a way that I thought was morally correct. I never once did something that the people that of that area in that county wanted me to do. I didn't do anything that they didn't want me to do is what I'm saying. Now the Sugar Pine Mine is in my state. It is in or Southern Oregon. It's not my community, but I know many people in that community. And I was invited to the Sugar Pine Mine as well. And at the time I was not really allowed to talk too much about what was going on there because of operational security and we didn't want to post things online of what we exactly we were doing um, in that area but the uh, because obviously you know anyone can watch those uh, anything any sorts of videos we post online I personally was directly involved in uh, reconnaissance patrols running reconnaissance and overwatch um, positions it, at uh, the Sugar Pine Mine in several uh, on several occasions, and I was uh, I led groups of people to um, to Overwatch positions and to run reconnaissance patrols in the woods of Oregon, and there's plenty of people that would verify that that were there. Um, and and the point is is that the Sugar Pine Mine that the people there invited us to come and all we did was walk around the woods to look and see and our specific orders were to 
observe and report only. And, and that I was very comfortable with that because there's nothing wrong with that. As far as the federal government and the law is concerned, I was taking a hike in the woods with friends, heavily armed, <laughs> but, but we were doing nothing wrong. There was, we were um, there to ensure that the people of the Sugar Pine Mine had their day in court. That's what, that's what we were there for. So the Bundy Ranch, to stop an active attack on people and property. And the Sugar Pine Mine was to defend property of people who were lawfully there and, and to ensure that they had their day in court. That, those were active things that were going on. There, there was, it was an emergency situation that needed to be addressed by people who were willing to stand up and say, we're not going to allow this to happen uh, in in a way that hurts these people and it was what I'm saying is it's an active situation now to get on to the Hammond situation as far as I can tell the people of that area uh, as well as the Hammonds are not uh, necessarily in support of Ammon Bundy and Blaine Cooper who are outside of the purview of the wishes of the people of that area uh, neither Blaine Cooper nor Ammon Bundy are from Oregon nor do they reside here, and they're not welcome here. They were not asked to to come and do what they're doing. Uh, being a resident of Oregon, I don't appreciate people coming uh, from out of the area to start stuff in our backyard. If my neighbor came into my backyard and then s s was occupying my backyard and then all of a sudden was fl flipping guns around and saying, we're not leaving, uh, what do you think that you would do? you'd probably call the cops because you, that guy came to your backyard, he came into your area and took it over and did whatever they were going to do with it, which is not okay. We didn't ask them to come. They're not welcome here. Secondly, Ammon Bundy and this man Blaine Cooper, presumably, I don't know that for sure, pre-planned this event. They pre-planned to take over this wildlife refugee. This was not something done on the, flood, the seat of their pants. And there's uh, plenty of, of the digital flyers that they put out for this protest that specifically said they weren't going to do something like this. And then they turned around and did it. So that makes them liars, first of all. Uh, not only did they lie to the people of the area, but they lied to the groups that were supporting them, including the Pacific, Pacific Patriots Network, the Oregon 3%, the Idaho 3%, and the other groups that are, that are concerned with the happenings in Oregon. And they did not consult those groups. They did not, and, they, and those groups were left out of the loop on this. Now tell me, if somebody so righteously is going to do something uh, in this way, why would they leave out these groups that, that are supposedly, uh, that, that, they, that, that normally would be sympathetic with a, a, a man like Eamon Bundy? Why would they leave us out of the loop? Why would they leave them out of the loop? I'm not part of any of those groups, so excuse me for saying us. But... The, why would they leave them out? Because they knew that we wouldn't support it. And that's, it's none of their business to come into our neighborhood and to do things in our backyard that we don't want them to do. Now, as I've stated before, I was at the Bundy Ranch and I was at the Sugar Pine Mine and I understand and I support the, the fact that sometimes you have to do something. You can no longer stand by and just watch and just have this happen. I've been there. I've done it. And I've had a lot of haters come on to my Facebook page and talk crap about me. Well, guess what? I've stood up more than once, more than twice, and I've been there when the chips were down. And where were you? So who are you to criticize me? Because I'm the one who's, who's standing up when the chips are down. I've been there. And this is not the time or place. The peaceful protest would have been a really good thing for that county. But guess what? Now it's totally tainted. And now the Pacific Patriot Network, the Oregon 3%, the Idaho 3%, and, and all these other Oregon groups and, and Northwest groups are going to get bad names because of these people from another state who are not even welcome. They, we don't even want them here. And now we're going to get a bad name because they came out of our group, is what the news is reporting. But they're not. They're not from us. It's not us. I want to show you something right now, okay? This is a tribal citizenship card for the Chickasaw tribe, okay? I'm a citizen of the Chickasaw tribe because I have enough 
blood in running in my veins that I could trace it back my ancestry to there and I've gotten my citizenship I hold dual citizenship with this the nation of the of the Chickasaw Nation and the United States and I you, look if anybody's gonna be pissed at the government it should be people like me right the government rounded up people my people they were living in what you would call a home they had jobs like lawyers and businessmen and shopkeepers and things like that. These, they were one of the five civilized tribes. They rounded up these people and their families. They kicked them off their land. They dragged them along the Trail of Tears to a place that they had never been and dropped them off in the wilderness. My tribe ceased to exist for a couple uh, decades because they had fallen so far out of, out of existence. It wasn't until later that they reestablished themselves as a Indian nation and and what they are today <clears throat> that is a horrible thing now that that the, my point is in saying this is that my tribe w was the uh, victims of essentially genocide and uh, relocation in a horrible horrible acts by our federal government and these people losing their ranches that's really bad but they've lost those ranches. You don't see me going to occupy the Carolinas because of, you know, past uh, grievances against the government. You know, that ship has sailed. That ship has sailed. You need to do something with the people that are there. Why are the, the why is Ammon not at the Hammonds ranch? They need, why aren't they there? Because the Hammonds don't want them there. Because they didn't ask them to be there. So they had to go and find a victim and then say they were going to defend them. This is not something that you just go and do. I'm not opposed in any way, in any way, in taking a rightful and moral stand against government oppression. But if you're going to do it, then you should do it right. Do you think the Confederate States of America, when they, when they seceded from the Union, do you think they were just like, all right, well, here's the border. Uh, right about here. Right, see you later. No, they prepared for war beforehand because they knew what was coming. Any any rebellion has any rebellion that's actually worked has planning behind it and logistics behind it because guess what? Tactics and logistics win wars. They win battles. If you want to, you know, using these terms a little loosely here, logistics and tactics. And the Ammon Bundy and his associates have have uh, shown none of that they're asking for money now and asking for support now and asking for people to come now this is the stupidest thing that i've ever heard of if ammon bundy really wanted to do right by the people of oregon and do right by the hammonds and all this stuff he would have contacted these groups within oregon that, that w would potentially be sympathetic to his views and made a plan months in advance and made logistical uh, considerations and tactical considerations months in advance and instead he's uh, taken I don't know a week or two or three to just decide that this was going to happen contact a few people and then steal people out of the peaceful rally and take them and give these people courage to do something that they shouldn't be doing because uh, let's face it there's stupid people in every group and take them out to this ill um, you know, de desired thing. If if he really wanted to do something that was right by us, he should have contacted us first. I'm honestly surprised uh, that someone like the people that are taking over this wildlife refugee, who supposedly want to be left alone, are going to come into someone else's place and start a fight on, on <laughs> supposedly on our behalf <clears throat> without con without consulting us. Because guess what? They're doing exactly what they're supposedly fighting against. They're the ones who are uh, who are, are coming in and making someone get involved in something they don't want to be involved in. I want to close this with saying that I support people who want to be rebellious. I support people who my family fought for the South, okay? My I support people who want to be involved in civil disobedience that is meaningful and rebellion that is meaningful and if you're gonna do it then you should do it the right way you should do it you should go out and and make sure that it's gonna be effective and worth what your time your lives and your fortunes and this is not that 
and that's why I don't support it. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you on the next one.